he lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride. child can face in certain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he Fear is gone because I know he holds the future and my life is worth the living just because he And then one day I'll cross that river I'll fight life's fight or with pain And then as day gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the because he lives. Amen. I just, uh, what a blessing. Amen. There's a guy stopped me at Tent Revival now, and he said, boy, oh, your church is, that's an excited church. And I started to say, you mean the others ain't? 
I thought this was going on everywhere, amen. Somebody acts like it's not, but uh, um, we're just excited about being saved, amen. You can't, you can't hardly talk about because he lives without getting excited about it. So um, you'll get more excited about it one of these days. If you're saved, you get to heaven, you'll be more excited about it. Genesis 32, I know I preached this the other day. I'm not completely lost my mind. Uh, I'm waiting to be presidential when I do. Um, y'all took that the wrong way. I did not mean for... I did not mean for that to sound like that. I told him a while ago they just sort of take teleprompters and turn them around towards the screen and he can stay in the basement, amen, and we'll read what he was going to say. If I was going to do that, I'd print my notes up there and we'd all read through them and then we'd go to the house. But uh, I think we probably, after this week and this world we live in, we probably need some preaching, amen. There was a lady who gave devotion the other night at the Tent Revival and did a wonderful job. She, uh, uh, gosh, she actually had a better outline than some people I've heard preach. But she just did a devotional and she said, listen, I'm not, I'm not preaching, but I'm, I'm, I've just got a devotional here. And she did a great job. Of, you know, I, I thought it was, everything was wonderful with it. And then I got up there, though, and you know me, I was going, and I looked at him and I said, listen, you said you wasn't preaching, but I, guess, I said, guess what I'm fixing to do? I'm fixing to rear back and preach, amen. And so, and uh, no disrespect to her, but I, I've been waiting for that all night. I've been sitting there thinking, come on, let's get it. Yeah. Verse 24. Uh, now, like I said, I know I just preached this not long ago, and actually I was going to preach this message this morning, the next Sunday. Lord wouldn't let me, but because I felt, I, I felt something in there when I got down in this one part, and so I'm, I'm going to read through it because you might not have been here. I know y'all all here every Sunday, but you might have, maybe you just wasn't listening good. What's so funny? Hey, thank y'all today. Big crowd for um, usually Memorial Day. Everybody just says, listen, we're just going to be, we're just universal statement. We're not going to be here. Amen. And we'll be back every now and then this summer. That's usually kind of the way it works. And, uh, you know, some people would text me. They had good reasons. I had to go with family and stuff. But, but I was just kind of made me just kind of down. And then I walked in and that balcony, man, that thing's about, uh, there's probably 80 people up there or so. And, and, uh, um, and you down here would say amen because if you put all them on top of you, next thing you know, you say, I wish they had a balcony for somebody to go sit in. So, and if, if they don't like y'all, they start spitting spit wads and they'll win. That bunch of people will win, amen. <sighs> and, and Jacob was left alone. Well, a Briggs just puked all over my jacket, amen, and that's all right. I, them grandkids can, they, they can poop puke, whatever they want to, and they're awesome. Amen. He wrestled with the man until the breaking of the day, verse 25, and when he saw that he prevaileth not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of his thigh was taken out of joint as he wrestled with him. He said, let me go for the day breaking. He said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Don't read past that. He said, I'm not letting go unless you bless me. And, and, and really, I mean, like I said, he started out wrestling, but now he's just holding on. We, we, it's a wrestle in this world we live in. I don't know if you, maybe, maybe you're so doped up you don't know it. But this is a bad world. It's a tough world. Amen. I, 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 I always think about a t-shirt, you know, these t-shirt things, I guess ought to be in the business. But say, say you know, enjoy today because tomorrow may really stink. I mean, we need to enjoy, he said. It's a wrestling match. And it's always wrestling against old Satan, amen. But he said, I'm not letting go unless you bless me. I like a man. God likes a man with an attitude like that. And we've got little old slippery fingers and hands and weak grip, and we don't want to hold on to nothing unless it's a stinking lie or something that the media tells you or something you saw on Facebook. But we don't hold on to things we're to be holding on to. And I'm fixing to get there. But he said, bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. It's because he got it right, because he had lied before and said he was Esau when his name's Jacob. And God said, since you're hanging on now, listen, if he had let go, he never would have had that moment where he looked at God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, and looked at him and said, what's your name? I cherish those moments of conviction that the Lord looked at me and said, Who are you? And I said, I'm not what you want me to be. I'm just Kurt. He said, well, You've lived a lie for many years. But today I'm going to call you Israel. Bless God. Amen. It's about time, amen, that we learn to hold on. And I'm going to preach a message this morning. I'm going to turn it around and show you the other side of this thing I didn't get the other day. But why people let go. Why people, and in parentheses, why people let go. Quotation marks. Quotation marks. Why people let go. 
Now, I wonder why so many slipping, uh, 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 slipping right through, we call it slipping through the cracks. You know, we, it's easy to blame it on the world and just say, well, these people don't want church anymore. It may be the cracks in the church. It might be stuff we're doing or we're saying or not doing. It's the cracks that they're slipping through. But it, what bothers me is the so-called Christian members of a Baptist church Oh, what they thought they joined. Ain't anything else you just join and say, I'm, I'm one of those, but I've never been back. Something wrong right there. I tell you what's wrong. It's why people's letting go, and I'm fixing to preach on that. You'll hold on to your money. You probably can't tell me three verses about how to be saved, but you can tell me what your bank account is. You tell me how much your land is worth and your house and everything. You'll hold on to your possessions. You'll hold on to your land. You'll hold on. And I'm all for some of this. I mean, that's, that's fine. Uh, you know, if, if um, uh, 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 somebody passes down something to you, we'll hold on to it. Bless God, my family gave this to me. They're sweating blood. Somebody bled for you too and sweated for you. And you don't seem to care one bit about this. Oh, but whatever grandpa and daddy left behind, I tell you, whatever my daddy leaves me will never be more important than my heavenly father left me. And I love my daddy, and I go see my daddy. And I, I, I'll do everything I can to be. My daddy's awesome. I love my daddy. And my mom was uh, before she passed. But I'm telling you right now, when I'm not lifting him above what I stand for here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love y'all, but I'm not going to put it above what this right. My father left me something. Yeah. You know how you hold on? It's by faith. Yeah. This is a faith thing. We're not physically going to get a hold of Jesus. You're not physically going to get a hold of those posts and hold on to my church. and you, you, It ain't none of that stuff. It's by faith. It's by faith. But there's something trying to take our faith away. There's something trying to pull you the other way. Job held on for 40 chapters. After about chapter 2, when, 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 uh, uh, after his children had died and all that had happened, and he got the, 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 the sores, the bulls, he got the disease itself. And, and listen, you, like I said in class a while ago, we all don't like pain. You know, doctors, they go, or nurses, they go, what are you allergic to? And you go, pain. Well, we're you know, good, and we all are. But pain is more important when it's me than you. Amen. Don't take it as being selfish or conceited or cocky or something. I'm just telling you, you feel the same way, you may not act like it. Oh, well, bless your heart. I, you know, uh, uh, boy, I just feel so, yeah, I know we all feel, and it bothers me. I, I've been troubled this week by, uh, um, by just uh, uh, Brother Gary and, and Brother Ron, some of ours that's just... Uh, battling cancer, it just makes it, uh, it ain't hurting me as bad as them. Let me let me qualify, okay? And it ain't even hurting me as bad as their family. And I, I'm not. Be, I mean, I'm just telling the truth. I tell it like it is. But it's bothered me from the moment I got off the phone uh, with Rhonda the other day. I just I was just sick. It made me sick, just physically, it, you know. And that's my church. That's my church people. I love them, and and it hurts. But but somewhere you got to hold on. Get a hold of something, amen. And this it seemed like folks, Job held on for 40 more chapters before God blessed them. And you know what? You may be on chapter 39 today, and you're just about ready to quit, and you let go. And the Lord said, man, if you just stayed in there till chapter 42, chapter 40, we into chapter 41, I was fixing to give you a blessing. You say, so God makes deals like that? He did with Job. I don't know. He did with Job. I, I, I just don't blow this stuff off and, and act like no big deal. It's a big deal to me. The reason you don't hold on to some stuff because it's just not important to you. Like I said, you're going to hold on to your cell phone. If I ask right now where everybody's cell phone at, let's just take out of church because some people leave them out there. It's, thank God it's for, for just a few minutes we don't have it. But during the week, if you just said, hey, you got your cell phone? 99.9%, just as, just as good as uh, uh, Lysol on COVID. 99 point, everything's 99.9 .9 in this world except this right here. And this is one zero zero, hundred percent 100%. You, hold no, you know where, I, I mean, I've got my phone with me all the time, unless I'm up here doing this, but I mean, you just grab it right out. We hold on to everything else. I, it's, it's in your hand most of the time. And your nose is buried up in it. Why people, here we go, why people let go. I think I've, 19 years of pastoring, I'm going to get some of this right, okay? Because I've got a good idea. And God gave this to me, and, and, and like I said, I was going to preach it that next Sunday, but this Lord didn't let me. Number one is because you're too busy holding on to something else. 
This is not, this is not just for the people that's part-timers or sometimes that come to church. This is for all of us that's here. I, I, I pick out some guys that's got the guts to handle it, but this is for Brother Shannon and Brother Tim and me, Brother Jason. I, I don't want to offend anybody. I'll try to get a group there that, that I think is tough enough to handle that. But listen, this, this is not just for so you go, oh, yeah, yeah, my family, my cousins, my, well, so-and-so, they need this. I reckon you need it. I reckon. Wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and run with patience the race that's set before us. He said, let go of something. We need to set aside that weight. Uh, he, it, he, did, the, he said, what, the weight? And then he said, what, the sin? If it had been the same, he wouldn't have said it twice. He, he made a difference between weight and sin. Weight is not always sin. Taking your kids to soccer ball, t-ball, and uh, dance, and, uh, uh, I don't know, choir, band, and all the things that they're involved in. I'm talking about one kid. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make it. You know, just whatever they want. So you got five or six things. You got all that going on, and then the, the, you're trying to work, trying to get that done, trying to get just cram something. You know, run through Sonic and grab something, and, and, and all of a sudden you find yourself just so much weight that you can't, you you don't have, you ain't even talked to your spouse. You've not, you've not done anything for yourself, and then you wonder why you're in the mess you're in. Weight can become sin. When all that stuff takes away from this, I don't care how you slice it, and you don't need Greek and Hebrew to understand what I'm saying. That's sin then. You've got to get your priorities straightened out. And then you hold on a little bit more. But see, that we, like I said, we're too busy holding on to everything else. That promotion at work was a demotion at church. You're holding on to, you, you, you're trusting in insurance more than you trust God. You trust your 401K, amen, and, and, and all these things, amen. Uh, you know, it, it kills me when people come in and go, oh, we just love it here. Oh, man, we, well, I tell you, we ain't never been in church like this. We love it. We just love the preaching, and we love the church. We love these people here. But you love it less than what you're holding on to. Uh, prove it. Prove it. Sometime, sometime when you got that load of weight and you wake up on Sunday morning and say, that weight can wait till Monday, but today we're going to church. And until Daddy puts on the big boy britches and makes up his mind that I don't care what i got to let go of, this is important to me and my family. You'll look up one day and have a little hellion running around. And, and you're down there trying to always pay them out of jail and buying them new stuff all the time. And you'll wonder what's happened in your family. And you'll say, I wish I would have sat there and listened to that preaching and, and done what I was supposed to. But what's wrong is we've got husbands, little old limp-wristed, amen, thin skin, a little soft like a baby skin. They've not held on to nothing in their life. And their marriage is just disposable when they get done with that and, and their schools and everything else because they, nothing's important to them. Except that part out there. You're too busy holding on to something else. Just too busy. And don't tell me how much you love church. Show me how much you love church. Show me how much you love church. Show your spouse how much you love them. Instead of just popping your gun. I've seen people before that was in adulterous affairs. And they'd be on their phone. I mean, I, everybody knew it, I guess. I knew it. I, and, and they'd be sitting there. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do they, oh, yeah, I love you, sweetie. You know, like if they said, I love you before they hung up, that meant, oh, that was... And they never around them. And when it was, when they wasn't around them, they was on the phone with somebody else. Choose ye this day whom you'll serve. It's either God or mammon. My Bible's full and packed full of that stuff right there. The love of money is why you depart from the faith. And you say, well, all they want is my money there. Well, if you, went, if you didn't stop going everywhere it wants your money... That'll that, that stop you from a lot of things you do, won't it? I thought Walmart, all they ever want is my money. I feel like I offend them when I go in and don't get nothing and I just walk out. But I always feel like they're looking at me thinking, he stole something. You ever done that? You just go in and, and, and uh, you know, you just think, I ain't doing this. I've made it to the front and set my stuff down. The line's too long. One reason people don't hold on, they're too busy holding on something else. 
Another reason is, and I know you think, well, this is just beat up Sunday. Well, what do you call it? What you want to call it? It's about time for a bladder issue. Everybody have to go to the bathroom. Well, I, I got to go to the bathroom. I bet you do. We got a speaker in there. And we're not playing sweating the oldies while you're in there. We're we, we playing preaching. You get off this premise, turn your radio on the right channel, we'll be on it too till you get through. You're going to drive four miles away from here to get away from what you're fixing to hear. You're too busy holding on to You know I'm right. You might as well pinch yourself this morning and say, he's right. Number two is because it's just taking too long. Well, I've held on and held on, but I just, I just don't know. I just don't think God's here. Are you kidding me? You've not held on long enough. See, see we, want the, we want the diet that shaves the pounds off fast. Oh, bless God, I don't care what the side effects are. Just knock it off fast and keep it off. I, I'm the same way you say, well, I'm going to try to eat better. Well, that, that, I, I hate to say this. It's going to take a long time to take care of the problems we got with this. Well, I'm going to try to eat better. Try, y'all, I, I thank God you're finally honest and said I'm going to try till you see something that you want to put in your mouth that's, that, that's, that's big old juicy burger between two buns. Right next to God's Word. That's the next thing I like. Got two lids on it, amen, and meat in the middle, amen. It's taking too long. Well, Naaman said, I want a quick fix. Why couldn't I do it? Why do I have to do it the way God said do it? Because you don't want to hold on. I wanted to, I, I thought I'd go up there and pray. And if other than you needing to be saved, I reckon that's about the only thing I know in the Scripture. Now, God can do what God wants to do when God wants to do it. But I wouldn't be expecting instant results, amen, microwave religion, amen. But I'll tell you, He'll save you the instant that you believe in Jesus Christ. But I'm talking about getting a blessing this morning. I'm talking about not just going to heaven and getting lucky by the skin of your teeth, everybody says. I'm talking about getting a blessing. I'm talking about you got a burden. I'm talking about you got some mess at home. And you need a blessing for God. I'm talking about you got to get a hold of it. And you say, God, I've been going to church faithful for, for three weeks. And I, I'm thinking about going on Wednesday night, maybe, or Sunday night. And, and I'm going, I'm going if you, say, you ain't holding on to nothing. I could go to my mother-in-law's and stay there for three weeks. She's back there, okay. I, there's a lot of things I can do for three weeks. You know, you, that's like people say, well, I went to church, you know. Uh, yeah, every now and You know, like I said, you, you, uh, you, you can stay. I could just about stay married to just about anybody for a couple weeks if you just stay away from them. We all got quiet on the mother-in-law's and the, and the marriage, did you? Y'all must have got your rear chewed out on the way to church. Are you acting? I didn't. I drove down here by myself. <laughs> Seriously. You know, you could be dedicated to a lot of things for a week or two. And you expect instant results. Well, they said if I'll just start getting in church. Um, yeah, that's kind of what we said. <laughs> Amen. You twisted it around. And so it's just taking too long to fix it. First Peter 5.10 said, but... The God of all grace, who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. After a while. We don't like that. I won't. I mean, I, I'm, the, I'm the worst. I mean, I'm ADD. I got more letters now than the LQBT, whatever. Got ADD, HDAD. I don't know what it spells. It don't spell nothing but just a mess. But I want something right now. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm... I want something now. I can't stand. When I order something, I don't want Amazon one or two days. I want it there now. I want to hear the the brakes squeaking on a UPS truck when I hit send and when I order it. I, I want. I got. I got to check my status. My status is this: looking at Amazon to see when my stuff's getting here. Every day I check my status. Amen. Some people now learn that they're getting a divorce over Facebook. Their status. Did you know that they had changed your status? The husband's going, mine? <laughs> yeah, your stuff's going to be in the yard. You get there, pictures of it on Facebook. Well, Snapchat or Instagram, something real fast so nobody can see it very long. I, I wonder what adulterer came out with that. Yeah, what pervert 
came out with, I don't know which one it is. I ain't never had it, but yeah, they, they say, oh, it just, it just for a few. I thought, oh, yeah, well, that's handy. How convenient. What's their selling point? You know, it's taking too long, Brother Kurt. We've been going to church here for six months, and okay. I'm not God. I don't know. Well, here's another one. Sometimes you just lose your grip. You just, you hold on, and you just lose it. Bible said in Hebrews 2, 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to things which we've heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Amen. This word right here, sometimes we just start to lose our grip. And you know, that's why you got to stay in the Word. That's why you got to pray. That's why you got to be at church. That's why you need to be in class. That's why, that's why the more you put in, the stronger your grip is. My grip got better when I started learning my Bible. I remember I'm talking about faith is your grip, your strength. My faith is, that's all I've got. But I want my faith to be strong. I mean, I want strong faith, amen. And I've seen what God can do, and it makes my faith even stronger uh, seeing what God's done. But sometimes it's just because you lost your strength and your grip. And see, you don't have the strength because you're not coming to where you need to come in God's house and not, not receiving the strength from God. Just like a man at the gate called Beautiful in Acts 3, the Bible says that he received strength. Strength. Silver and gold have I none, but what i got to give you some strength. And I need strength. I need, I need. Samson lost his strength because he lost his hair. It wasn't because you get a haircut you lose your strength. It's because that was God's promise as a Nazarite. Amen. And God said, that's where your power is at. And when he lost it, he lost his power. He lost his strength. And he said, Lord, remember me. He said, give me my strength back one more time. I'll take care of these Philistines. Next. Here's another one. There's a bunch of them, so hang on. And, and, and I'm going to go through nearly every one of them. The next one is, is, is sometimes you're just too busy holding on uh, to something else. Uh, sometimes you just, because it takes too long and you went ahead and, and let go, and sometimes you just lose your grip. Sometimes you hang on to something and you just lose your grip, and when you do, whoop, you're, it's over. But sometimes it's because you want somebody else to hold on for you. I can't believe I just said that. But I did. You know, it, it bothers me when people say, well, put me on y'all's prayer list. And they're members of the church. And I'm thinking, won't you put yourself on the prayer list? Won't you put yourself on your own knees and get serious? You want me to hold on because you ain't holding on. I, I, got, I got a little bit. I know I'm a pastor and a minister. But you do. Maybe, maybe you need to do something. Maybe that would help. Amen. You know, everything's not just touch a button and it gets done. Everything's not just instant. Everything's not microwave. And sometimes you need to show God something and show your pastor something. What makes you think, I want to stay here every Sunday and keep the lights on and open the door, unlock doors and open doors and me and Brother Shannon come in here and get everything ready and get that ready and get up and preach my guts out and sweat and bleed, cough up blood, amen, my spleen hurt and my liver quiver and everything else because, because people's living like a devil. And then you want me to hold on because you go play reindeer games all week, all summer long. Oh, man, what a blessing. Anybody misses church for Branson has lost their stinking mind. They're probably lost. They're probably lost. Amen. When we all get to Branson, what a day of rejoicing that will be. I just thought I'd say that. Yeah. How beautiful Branson must be, must be. Sweet home of the Dixie Stampede. I've never seen three guys stand on each other's shoulders and juggle uh, uh, bowling pins. Wow. Yeah, it cost you a hundred bucks, didn't it? A cheap meal and a hundred bucks to... I'm just saying, that's how ridiculous, silly ridiculous it is to sit there and want me to come down here and take care of all your business while you're being big and wonderful and, and, and living like a stinking heathen, amen, in Sodom and Gomorrah and wanting us to keep everything going. I, I'm just telling you, it takes, it, we need some dedicated people that say, we don't want that church to shut down. If everybody had decided this week to run off somewhere, guess what we'd have? I'm going to be here. I don't care. You... Fisher cut bait. If you're going to bring me up here when I'm dead, I'm going to be here while I'm live. 
people said, or said, well, you know, you're always running late, and said, you'll probably be late for your own funeral. I said, I ain't going unless somebody carries me. <laughs> Don't tell me what to say. We, we want everybody else praying. We want everybody else to be here. We want just a few select group, group to, to tithe and give offerings and try to keep the lights on. It's hot in here. Well, what the heck have you done to pay for a light bill? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to hear a piano. Won't you get up there and play it? I wish somebody sang a special. Well, won't you get up there and sing a special? I wish somebody, I wish uh, our pastor seems discouraged. You ain't done a stinking thing, but you ain't held on to nothing to encourage the pastor. Sit back there, sit back there on your phone and, and nap through the preaching. I see you, Brother Ronnie. Praise God. Amen. I didn't know if anybody ever got very spiritual all the way back there, but I just seen him hold his Bible up and say, Amen, right there. Now, I'm not the preacher going to get done here in a minute and go, Well, I'm sorry if I sounded a little angry today. I'm not angry. I'm where, I'm where some of y'all are right now. I used to be there. Me and my wife, we wasn't serious about church. We didn't go to church. We didn't care. But by golly, if somebody said, they're shutting all the churches down, well, bless God, we'll go protest. Well, won't you just go? Won't you just go to church and love your church and hold on to something instead of asking somebody else to hold on? Amen. I should have got the old Travis Tritt out and sang that song. Help me hold on to what we had. I can't sing very good, but I can sure let Travis do it. He'd have a whiskey song after it or something, but I... I'm, if I ever sang one, I'm going to sing that old Keith, Keith Whitley song. You say it best when you say nothing at all. <laughs> old Mr. Webster could never explain it. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy... Somebody needs to fix that over there. Oh, yeah? Okay, we'll, we'll get somebody that's holding on to take care of that for you. Yeah, send me a text and I'll remind. I'll get somebody. Like I said, that tag church down there at Little Rock, if I ever quit here, I'm going to tag church in Little Rock. I want to be in the church where it's actually they're honest. And when somebody says, well, we need somebody to, to teach a class, you go, oh, Tim's it. Oh, we need somebody to lead saying, okay, you're it. I, 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 I just don't understand it. I was, a, I was a, a Baptist mooch for a long time. We just figured somebody would keep the churches open while we lived a big, wonderful life. Out drinking on weekends, playing softball, living like a devil. But I counted on somebody to keep a church open. And Brother Ronnie said it best this morning. If it hadn't been for a group of women at that church down there, that thing wouldn't have stayed open. And it's a shame... That was the start of the fail of the men of this country, a bunch of little sissies today, amen, uh, 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 in skinny jeans and, and, and just, I mean, just stupid. And, 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 and if it hadn't been for some women, we wouldn't even have what we got today, amen. Thank God for them, but the failure of the men, amen. We just want somebody to hold on for it. That's why people let go, is because somebody else will do it. Don't worry about it. We got this. We got it. Just don't worry about it. We got it. And I will. I'm, I am qualified, certified, and completely ready to do every job around this church that I've got to do. I will teach this, I'll teach Sunday school class. I'll teach every one of them. We'll put them in one room. I will, I will do whatever I've got to do. But I'm not dead. I didn't come in here to quit and give up. I didn't run, I've not run off on vacation. How many times have I been to Branson on a Sunday in, in 25 years? Take a guess. That's right, zero. How many times have I missed because I was sick in 19 years on a Sunday morning? Y'all want to do the math? But you say, well, we just we can't help but get sick. Have you ever prayed? I, I say, I do. I say, God, please don't let me be sick on a Sunday morning. I've prayed that for twenty, for nineteen years, and God's blessed me with it. It's just according, it's according to where your priorities at. People's not holding on to anything. You drop your phone somewhere, it, 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 uh, it, you you dive it, you drop it in a pond, you drive in after the thing. And then you'll show up here if you ain't if if everything's just lined up just right. You say, well, we're here today. Has this bothered any of you that are faithful for every service? It bothers you the fact that you wasted a lot of years, but it don't bother me. I say, if they tag me, I'll say, I am it. And Sandy thinks I am already. Is she back there today? Yeah, by her, mother, by her mom. I got the mother-in-law and the wife. 
It's going to be good lunch today, folks. I wonder what I'll be in that. Rat poison. Um, I've always told it, but I see some new people here today, but that, that one told, that lady told, that preacher said, if you was my husband, I'd feed you rat poison. He said, if you was my wife, I'd eat it. Uh, you you want to know why a lot of people let go? Because they don't want to suffer any. Oh, we just, man, we miss y'all church. Well, we've just been, we've just been through it. We've got, we've got, we're the Duggars, we've got 20-something kids, and one of them was sick, and we've just all been sick. I thought you told me one of them's been sick. Well, we, we, we just, it's, you don't understand. Oh, so the little kids drive? No, they don't drive. Well, why did, well, we're just going through it right now. We're just going through a hard time. I, I'm going to give you some good advice this morning. That's why you came to church. Hear me give you good advice. If you're really going through it, I'm going to tell you a good place to go. Church. If, if your marriage is a wreck, and I'm not going to stop by y'all. I'm, 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 <laughs> if they're on the front row, they're in a good place. Marriage in a wreck, I'll tell you a good place to be to help get your marriage right. Church. I've, your finances are a wreck. If you'll come to me, I'll help you financially. But you're going to be driving something different. You're going to get a different cell phone plan. And you're going to quit some things. But I can help you with it. But really, right here is where you get to help. What, whatever's, whatever's rolling through your mind this morning you're dealing with, this is the best help I can... I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's not because I'm the pastor. It's not because of me. It's not because of... It's because it's church. It's church. And bless God, you were to say, you know what, I'm suffering right now, but I'm holding on to my church. Brother uh, uh, J.D. and some of them, they come in hurting. I see them rolling in wheelchairs. Oh, Brother Charlie back there, he'd probably been a lot easier at home this morning sitting there, but he came to church with his oxygen and, and sitting back there in a wheelchair because, listen, he's wanting to hold on to something. He knows if there's any help, it's right here, amen. These folks limped in here. These folks, uh, uh, Sister Phyllis could have said, well, it's just, uh, you know, it's hard getting around. This way. We'll just stay at home for six weeks or whatever. No, they're holding on to something. It's, it's because you don't want don't to suffer. Sometimes the actual holding on is suffering. It, it hurts sometimes. You have to give up something. But you've got to suffer a little bit to say, I'm going to hold on, dear Lord. Philippians 1.29 said, For unto you it is given in behalf of Christ not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. So why would I want to become a Christian if I'm going to suffer? Well, I'd rather suffer with Jesus than suffer without Jesus. That's a good, that's a good one. No pain, no gain. Next thing is, is because it's just easy to let go. A lot of people let go just because it's just easy. You know what the easiest thing is to do? Quit anything. Quit your, quit your marriage, quit your job, quit everything, everything in your life. It's so easy to just quit. And this world's made it easier. I read something this morning where there's a school somewhere that if kids don't turn in no homework, don't hit a lick of snake, don't do nothing, you've got to give them a 50 score on it. I wish they'd had that when I was in college because the curve, I didn't even never make a 50 in chemistry and passed. I could have maybe got a B out of the class if they gave me 50s for not doing anything. So prop back and go, I'm not going to do anything. Well, I'll give you 50. I, I thought it was a, we used to call it a goose egg. That probably offended the geese now, so we can't. <laughs> we're all afraid we'll offend the geese. You know what? Listen, that's a shame, amen, that we're in a mess like that. But, but they, you just, you, 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 it's just easy to let go. Quitting's just so easy. And, and people say, well, I, we just quit going. We just gave up. I'm glad Jesus didn't take the cross while blood's running down his body after cat of nine tails after being beat and treated like he was treated in a, in a lying, cheating government. And they drug him up the hill. And I'm glad that when he got pulled away up that hill bearing the cross, that he didn't throw it off his shoulder and tell us to go to hell. He took the cross to Calvary, and it was, listen, it had been easy for him to quit and say, I'm done with this. 
I don't care if they go to hell. I don't care if they die. I don't care about none of it because I'm suffering and it's hurting. Poof, just throw the cross off. But thank God he didn't quit. Amen. I'm glad he didn't quit. I can't stand a quitter. I can't stand. I cannot stand a quitter. Well, there's some people at that church don't like me. I'm going to quit. You, when you find a church where somebody don't, where everybody likes you, I'd be scared to death of that thing. Now, I believe this church loves me. I, I, really, I'm, I'm, I know this is, I'm not naive, but I mean, I, I believe you guys are here to hear me. I'm your pastor. You love me. And there's, there's things you may not like about that I do. And, and, and what, you know, I mean, them little things like that, but I believe you. You love your pastor and you trust your pastor. You're here today. I, I, I'm, I'm qualifying that, okay? I believe that. But there's guys that go in, and the first time somebody sticks their little chest out and crows like a rooster, they'll, they'll act like a little hen, you know, scared to death of all this and that, and they'll run off and go, well, we had some trouble down there. My gosh, dude, you've been there six months. Ask me how much trouble me and Sandy had in six months of our marriage. I mean, after the first month, I mean, it was love till 30 days and the bills came. It got real then. You're like... This is going to cost double. <laughs> Amen. All of a sudden, you know, it's just real reality. It's just easy to let go, but because you have no needs. It may be because you just don't have no needs. You're just not serious about holding on because you really don't have no needs. You, you, just, you can go get another loan. That'll help. You can just survive. You can just get by. We're just, you really don't have no needs. If it didn't say it in the Bible, I wouldn't be saying this point. But the Laodicean church... Said we have Christ said y'all have a need of nothing. Why would we pray at this church if we didn't have a need of anything? I, I don't know why we'd pray. Just get saved and don't have a need of anything. Yet. But but we do. I've got needs. I've got needs. And God said He take care of my needs uh, according to the power that worketh in in us. I have needs and you have needs. But that bunch there have need of nothing. There's churches they don't have a need of anything. Bank can cover it. Doctors can cover it. Uh, uh, psychiatrists can cover it. Pharmacists can cover it. The Pope, priest, Pope, preacher, whatever, puppet, whatever they got, he can cover it. Guys, that, that's, it, it's just that you don't have need of anything. Why, why in the world would you go to church? You've got, the, you've got more stuff than you ever had. No, you're missing something. Sometimes really, I, and, and I'll say this, I'm done. Um, Sometimes it's because we just physically get tired. We all do. Sometimes I'm wore out, and my spirituality is not where it should be, Brother Jody. And it's, 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 I know it's the flesh is weak, and God told us that. But sometimes we just physically get tired. You're tired. You're just so tired. But I promise you, don't come in and say, well, I'm tired. I'm tired. Everybody goes, I'm tired. I'm tired too. We're all tired. But, but seriously, you've held on so long wanting God to bless your family and your spouse don't care nothing about none of this, and you're holding on, and you're just tired, I pray for you. Stay strong. Stay in there, just like Job. Hey, you're, you're getting close. Just hang in there. Don't give up. You need a blessing bad enough, you'll hold on. That woman with the issue of blood went through the press. That, 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 uh, 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 whether your daughter's dying, whatever it may be, whether you're Job, whether you're Moses, you've got to hold on for a blessing, remember? These are reasons people let go, but hold on for a blessing. But listen, I'm going to say this and clarify this this morning because I don't want you to leave here and say this. I said hold on for a blessing. You don't hold on for salvation. If you did, Noah's Ark would have had big pegs hanging on it, and as long as you could hold on, you'd make it. When I dried up, if you're still holding on to the pegs, you're good. That's not salvation. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 5 that we're kept by the power of God. I'll tell you something. When it comes to salvation, I hold on to everything spiritual, spiritual in my life except one thing. And when it comes to that, I'm not holding on to God for salvation. He's holding on to me. Count by the power of God. Count by. If you're lost this morning, let me tell you something. You can't hold tight enough to be saved. What it is, you've got to let go of some stuff to be saved. You've got to say, I'm going to let go of religion. I'm going to let go of, of money. I'm going to let go of, of, of do false doctrines. I'm going to let go of myself. It ain't about me. Who are you? I'm lost. And he says, okay, now, do you want me to save you? And you say, this is spiritually happening. You say, yes, Lord, I believe in you. 
And I know you're the only one that can save my soul. And he'll save you. You didn't hold on to none of that. He'll take you and wrap you up in his arms. And he'll save you and forgive you and love you. And then you've got to say, now I've got to hold on to something. I've got to get in that church and hold on to some things. Thank God this is a spiritual... There's, they, I bet they in another... I bet you there's very few churches... I'm going to say it in Arkansas on a Wednesday night that don't bust in a bunch of people that just drive in that has 300 people. I've, I've, I've come to believe that. I, I know most of them don't have nothing, but the ones that do don't have it. And they go, man, y'all got 300 on Wednesday nights? That's amazing. You got 300, come back on. So there'll be three, over 300 tonight. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to hold on. Get a hold of something. You want a blessing, you better get to holding on. But... But, but seriously, guys, what I'm saying is God's doing something mighty, and we need to hold on. If you're lost this morning, I love you, and I want you to be saved. And we're fixing to have an invitation, and you, you, can, you, you can come down here. I'll take a Bible show you how to be saved. Get saved today. Let's stand. Yes.